All right, guys, welcome to Domain and Range Part 1. Uh, we are going to be talking mostly in this section about what domain is, but we will actually define range too. In the second video, we're going to discuss range. So what is domain? Domain is the set of all first elements uh, in, in an ordered pair, or the x values, okay? All the x values that are going to work. The range is a set of all second elements or the y values, okay? We spoke a little bit about domain and range in our functions video. So what happens if the domain is not given? You don't know what it is, okay? There's two things you need to look at. Number one, if the equation is a model of a real life situation uh, where the variables have meaning, you have to choose the domain that makes sense. For example, you can't have negative people. You can't have a fraction, fraction of a person. So you have to look at the context of the problem and see what domains you're going to use. Number two, if the problem has no context, maybe you give, you're given a linear equation, uh, then you're going to take the largest set of real numbers uh, for which y is defined. And there's two things you have to be careful of. You have to be careful that if you have a denominator, the denominator can't be zero, and the radicand will have to be greater than or equal to zero. So square roots and things like that. So let's look at an example. In this first one, this problem has context. So we have a bus that seats 40 people has been assigned to take some fans to a playoff game. Tickets for the bus are three bucks. The amount of money uh, taken in Y will be Y equals 3X, where X is the number of people who bought tickets. Now there's the key. X is the number of people. We want to know what the domain of that function is. So yes, I have a linear equation, and you might say the domain of any linear equation is all real numbers, which it is. But in the context here, the number of people who bought tickets. Well, you can't have negatives, you can't have fractions, and you can't have decimals of people. And we have to make sure the most we can have are 40 people, the fewest unfortunately would be zero, so nobody went to the game. So our domain are all the integers from zero to 40. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that is our domain. So this is a problem where you see um, domain having a model, and you have to be very careful on what you pick for your domain. In example 2 now, find the domain of this equation. There's no context given. So now I have to pick the largest set of real numbers in which y is defined. Now I see the radical here, and I know the square root can't be negative. So the, what's underneath here, the radicand, has to be greater than or equal to zero. So that's what I do. So I set what's the radicand greater than or equal to zero, and I solve for x. x has to be greater than or equal to three for that to be true. So if I use uh, two, two won't work because four minus six is negative to two. There's no real solution there, no real value for the domain. So we can include 3 and it's 3 to infinity work, or we can write this in set builder notation as x such that x is greater than or equal to 3. <clears throat> now, in example 3, I took the last example and put it in a denominator. We're finding the domain here. So we have 3 divided by the square root of 2x minus 6. There's two things that need to happen here. Number one, the denominator still can't be 0. Okay, and the radicand still has to be greater than or equal to zero because this is a positive square root and it's uh, even square. It's an even root, so it's the square root. If the denominator can't be zero, that means 2x minus 6 can't be zero. So I set that not equal to zero and I solve for x. So x can't be 3. If x is 3, we have something that's undefined. The radicand has to be greater than or equal to 0, so I took our last answer. x has to be greater than or equal to 3. So let's look. x can't be 3. Here, x can be greater than or equal to 3. So I can use every value other than 3 and greater. So 3 to infinity. Notice there's no bracket here. There's an underline here, so you might think we should use the bracket. But here, x actually can't be 3. So 3 to infinity works. and we don't include the 3, so the domain is x is greater than 3. In our last example, we have find the domain of this function, okay? So 
I see the denominator. Denominator can't be zero. But then I also have to look at the numerator. Now, the numerator can be zero. But the numerator, since this is a square root, has to be greater than or equal to zero. You can't have a negative under that radical. Okay, so it's okay to have a, a, a numerator of zero. We just can't have that radical be negative. So number one, we set the denominator. That denominator can't be zero. So we solve for x. We add 16 to both sides, take the square root. So x can't be plus or minus 4. Here, 5x plus 15 is greater than or equal to 0. There's our radical. The radical has to be greater than or equal to 0. So I subtract 15 from both sides, and I divide each side by 5. So x has to be greater than or equal to negative 3. So negative 4 is already out. X has to be greater than negative 3, so I can greater than or equal to negative 3, so I can start at negative 3 and I go to 4. I can't include 4 because of the restriction in union with 4 to infinity. So that is my domain for this example. I have to match, see what my restrictions are and write them. The other way you could write this is you could have said X is greater than or equal to negative 3 or uh, where x cannot be equal to 4. And that would suffice too. You'd be able to say, okay, all real numbers except, uh, all real numbers greater than or equal to negative 3, and x cannot be 4. So that's domain of a function. If you guys have any questions or comments, you can type them below or email me at nicholas.bennett at dc.gov.